Hello, all heroes, and welcome back to Invincible Garden of the Globe. And today, we are going to actually be going over Lucan. Now, this was much belayed on my part. I took my little siesta just before Lucan was released. Um, but it was pretty clear that Lucan was going to come out shortly after Thula because they both had explicitly labeled synergies. And we're going to talk about those synergies by discussing Lucan here. And then we will also do a little bit of refresher on Thula too, because they really do kind of come in as a package. Now, looking at Lucan here, he is a defender character with the From Worlds Beyond faction. Taking a look at his tags, he's Viltrumites, Melee, Flying, and Defender. Nothing too crazy there. Um, and he is a Melee character. Taking a look at his skills here, his main skill, a Deserved Death. Lucan slaps just one random enemy, pushing them and dealing 125% of his base attack damage. Uh, not Nothing too crazy here, actually. Um, I mean, it's just a little bit of damage and a knockback. It's not even a very high percentage, for being totally honest. And being a defender, his attack stat's probably going to be a little bit on the lower side, so nothing too crazy. But if you do get it leveled up, um, it does extend to more enemies and, re and reduces their physical defense. You get the physical defense debuff at about... Looks like four or five. Um, so that's probably your break point right there because you go up to two enemies and you get the defense decrease. That's probably what you're going to want to shoot for if you are leveling up this skill. Now, next we have Purge Survivor. Lucan increases his defense by 50% for five seconds every time an ally or enemy Viltrumite dies in battle. That goes all the way up to 100% for seven seconds. Now, you might notice that this mirrors Thula's skill where every time an ally or enemy Viltrumite dies, she gains attack. Here's the problem with that. I question the validity of defense, especially compared to Thula, which is a massive attack buff. If you have high attack, then you can slaughter the enemies before they can even do anything to you. Sometimes a good defense is, or a good offense is truly really the best defense. This guy, it's like, eh... Eh, I mean, yeah, you become a brick wall for seven seconds, but then what? Fighter to the end. Now, this is an interesting one because it's basically a last stand effect. When Lucan reaches zero HP, he jumps towards the enemy with the least defense, dealing 75% of his max HP as damage, and then dies. So basically what happens is when he croaks, he's going to use this ability first, and then perish. And then if you go all the way up to level 10, it's 120% of his max HP. This ability is probably the thing that really saves his kit, if we're being totally honest. His first two skills are okay. This one is okay. This one is honestly a little less than okay, if I'm being totally honest. This is interesting because if you really take the time to build up Lucan, give him some cranked up gear, give him an artifact that increases his max HP, you can pretty much guarantee that he's going to take somebody down with him with this event. Keeping in mind, he's a defender. He's going to have some exaggerated HP and defense stats, most likely. And if you get this leveled up, that can be a high amount of damage. Still factor in the enemy's defense, though, so it doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be an instant delete. But if he hits somebody a little bit softer, um, especially since it tar targets the enemy with the least defense, he might take him out. And now we have Viltrumite still makes right. Every 20 seconds, Lucan and Thula attack the target with the strongest attack stat, using a combined movement that deals 200% damage and taunts the enemy for 3 seconds. So he does get a taunt on this skill. If Thula is on the same team, both heroes receive a 20% attack increase for 3 seconds after the attack. If we go up to level 5, you'll see this triggers at the beginning of the battle and every 20 seconds. And the taunt duration extends and the attack increase extends. Going up to 5 seconds, the attack triggering every 18 seconds, um, and a 40% attack increase for 5 seconds. Pretty much this exists to enable Thula and make Lucan a bit more valuable. Now, this skill does not need Thula to trigger, but you do need Thula on the team to receive the attack increase. So that's kind of something to keep in mind there. Um, it's It's okay. What you really want here is the fact that it gives Thula a much-needed attack increase, making her even stronger than she already is, because she can do some pretty nutty damage on a good day. So, that's kind of something to keep in mind. 
Now let's compare it to Thula real quick. We take a look at Thula here. Of course, her second ability here, a lust for death. Whenever a Viltrumite dies, she gets a massive attack boost. I find this dramatically more useful than the um, th than uh, Lucan's respective defense boost. I mean, if you're a brick wall, there's only so much of a brick wall you can be. Whereas if you get an attack boost, you can murder the enemy even faster, especially if you get this leveled up. I, I want to do this so bad. I really do. But I've just got too much on the, on my plate with other characters because I've got to get Omni-Man powered up. And then I've got to get Adam Eve powered up. Maybe after Adam Eve, I'll pivot to Thula because I do like her kit, honestly. Um, And then with her other ability here, whereas Lucan gets a taunt, which is all fine and dandy, Thula actually gets a stun. And I'm sorry, but a stun's just better. It just is. But that's a matter of opinion. So, like, here's the thing with Thula and Lucan. Thula, you could absolutely use on her own. You could 100% use Thula on her own. She is just that good. Lucan, if you're using Lucan, you need to have Thula on the team. Otherwise, he's just not going to work as well. He's just not. So that's, that's my opinions. He's not a bad defender, per se. He does have some nasty competition in the form of Alan and Monster Girl. He's not bad. But he absolutely positively must be in a team with Thula. Otherwise, he's losing a lot of utility, whereas Thula can operate really easily on her own. Um, now, like I said, if you do have them together, now you're cooking. And let's not forget that um, maybe Anissa can come out one day with some Viltrumite synergies. Um, Omni-Man doesn't technically have Viltrumite synergies, but he does give the life leech against humans, which is all fine and dandy. So just kind of something to keep in mind there. If you were going to give Lucan an artifact... Probably the Burger Mart Burger. I mean, that one is just that that one is just such a good, um, a, a good defender artifact. It's not even funny. Um, Obedience Collar is of course very good as well. So you know, keep that one in mind. That probably focus on Thula first if you can. If you are building Thula, then you can build Lucan after the fact and slap them together and they will do well. But like I said, that's just kind of my opinion on the matter. For whatever reason, though, both of these characters are still not available in the main Elite Heroes shop. I don't understand why. I guess they're considered maybe a little more premium. I mean, your guess is as good as mine on that one. But we are still kind of waiting. It almost makes me wonder if Anissa is going to come out. And it's going to be like a Viltrumite-themed event where it's Anissa, Thula, and Lucan, which would be kind of nuts, actually. Um, and in which case, I mean, I've got gems and I've got dossiers, so I'm feeling pretty ready if they go down that route. But we will cross that bridge when we come to it. For now, that is all we have for today. Let me know down in the comments below if you're using the Viltrumites, and we shall see you next time. Have a good day.